Personalized, personalized learning is one of the big promises of uh, online learning and digital learning. And we all know that it has something to do with uh, big data, has a big role to play there. And let's kind of uh, look at other industries that we have already uh, listened to a number of speakers. They've talked about how personalization is a solved problem for them. Since whether you're trying to buy a garment or whether you're trying to watch uh, a movie on Netflix or, uh, you know, Pandora kind of knows the exact song that I need to, that I'm interested in listening and is able to kind of uh, suggest that to me. Or uh, Pulse kind of knows the news categories that I care about and uh, recommends the news items within those categories all the time. And uh, Amazon, of course, has made uh, impulse buying a very uh, attractive thing for everyone because it somehow is able to read my mind all the time about what kind of products I'm looking to buy. So all of these industries have uh, adopted big data and kind of implemented personalization in many ways. So let's kind of uh, deconstruct to see what is it they have done, and as a result, what, is, what do we need to do to figure out how personalized learning can happen? So step one is they clearly have a user profile. You know, you can kind of, uh, um, you heard Eric's talk where they capture everything about uh, your body size and shape and uh, your uh, risk uh, uh, averseness or uh, risk profile and so forth for uh, clothing. So they capture user profile, either by asking you for it or by tracking some of the behavior that uh, you exhibit on their sites. Now, the user profile that they capture is not very complete. Netflix doesn't know about the movie I watched uh, on YouTube, or Amazon does not know what I did over the weekend uh, shopping in the malls. But whatever they have, they have a reasonable user profile to start with. Number two is they have a catalog. Since Amazon knows for all the millions of products that they have, they have a perfect catalog. They know all the descriptive information. They know which of these products got returned how many times. Netflix knows you know, the movies that got paused and uh, people quit watching after 12 minutes and 23 seconds. And uh, so they have created a perfect catalog. And then, of course, the recommendation algorithms. Uh, many of you are uh, good experts at that. And there's a whole variety of them. And at least to get things started, you have the recommendation algorithms. So from a learning perspective, what is lacking? Since every system will have some profile, what is centrally missing here is what we refer to as the learning resource catalog. Learning resource catalog that can kind of uh, uh, capture millions of learning resources on the web. and organize all of these resources into a taxonomy so that it can relate every resource to what is the um, subject, course, unit, topic, lesson, or concept that this resource uh, is uh, likely to teach. Kind of tag all the resources on the web with the perfect uh, metadata. So the metadata, like the descriptive metadata, which uh, is uh, fairly standard in terms of details, uh, description, title, and uh, rights information and so on, but also metadata about the learning outcome. People who watch this uh, video on uh, atoms and molecules, how did they do on the corresponding quiz? And finally, all the user inputs and usage data that uh, we need to capture and kind of present. So what we'll do is kind of take a 90 second uh, break to watch a short video on one user story about how a teacher would use a learning resource catalog Mrs. Johnson is a sixth grade math teacher with 30 students. She has data from test scores and homework assignments, and she can see the different learning needs for each student. Many of her students are weak in this Common Core State Standard, which has to do with understanding ratio concepts. She wants to find high quality resources on the web to enhance their understanding of ratios, but Mrs. Johnson is at a loss. The resources are vast and scattered, and she doesn't have a way to pinpoint the perfect resources to fill each student's learning need. With a learning resource catalog, we can quickly make sense of the vast amount of resources on the web. The catalog covers all K-12 subjects and is constantly being updated with the latest online learning resources. We can drill down to see millions of resources, such as videos, games, and digital textbooks. Mrs. Johnson can look at all the resources available for this Common Core State Standard. The resources are tagged with descriptive data, like title, source, and age range. 
user inputs such as vocabulary, likes and dislikes, usage data such as views and time spent studying, and learning outcomes like quiz scores and concept mastery. Now Mrs. Johnson can select the most effective resource for each student. She can copy the link and assign it via email. With millions of education materials on the web, we need a learning resource catalog that organizes and tags them and provides an easy way for teachers to pinpoint resources and personalize learning for their students. So I kind of want to uh, wrap this up by mentioning that uh, Guru and the learning resource catalog is a core element of uh, SLC in Bloom and uh, I would love to meet with as many of you at the booth. Uh, we have a booth in uh, the exhibit hall, so please come and uh, uh, discuss your uh, issues, challenges, and ideas with us. Thank you very much.